What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful.com. Usually I say here with a name you know, but we got three that you know, and you're going to know them a lot more after talking Shopamania. Fight TV, August 1st, 9 p.m. I'm going to be there, and so are these three fellas. We got Rocky Romero, who is obviously in the news more than either one of these other two guys that I have. Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows. Collectively, just like, how are y'all doing? Hold on, Rocky's in the news more than us. Yes. you heard that. Yes. You heard that. You heard he is. that. He you is. heard that right. Time, a big deal, to, man. time to fuck out a second. I, <laughs> Rock's Rock's getting sick of hearing about us. Well, that's kind of our relationship, though. We talk. Rock laughs. We don't let Rock talk. That. We laugh. We make him yeah. laugh, and then we and then we ensure that we're in the headlines, not him. Well, we had <laughs> mentioned this right before we went on the air. I'd hit you up a few times, Carl. Last year, I was like, "Listen, yeah. as soon as you all are gone." I don't know. I, at that point, I didn't know if you were still in like the Cincinnati, Kentucky area or if you had moved to Florida. I was like, yep. I will come to you for an interview. And then it's like Anderson and Gallows, five more years. But, I mean, the well, world has a way of working itself out, I guess. Yeah, well, I would have ensured that we would have had an awesome interview September of 2019. Then, yeah. well, Big Hoot and I made literally one of the biggest business decisions of our lives, right? And we resigned. Sure. So, but I also didn't think I did. I did think it would be five years before we spoke. I didn't realize it would be ten months in the middle of a global <laughs> pandemic. You know, fuck. Well, I got fired on purpose because I don't want to do any interviews after my fortieth birthday, and then in five years I'm forty. So I wanted to go ahead and knock this shit out now. So I'm glad we're doing it. But I do want to add on to what talking shop of mania being on Fight TV. Yes, it's available worldwide on Fight TV. But in America and Canada on regular pay-per-view in demand, direct TV, nice. Dish, Verizon, Newburst, Shaw Pay-Per-View, Bell TV, Saskatel, and of course Fight TV Worldwide. Love the guys. Nice. Step and he's got his pen in hand. He's fucking writing he's things just, down. He's doing business. Look at yeah. Him. Look at him go. Yeah. So you all obviously we we had known Talk and Chopamania was coming up, but uh, you all did a, a extensive interview, kind of kind of laying out everything. One of the highlights of that to me was Rocky being like, yeah, by the way, these people buried you. Who else, <laughs> who else completely buried these two along the way? Was there anybody that was like, man, what, what are they doing? Everyone. Everyone probably. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, the, the Bucks and I, you know, we, like our little side text, obviously, because, you know, you know, New Japan and AEW. Kind of got screwed in that deal, you know. I need but, to see this <laughs> side text. This, this, I need to see this stupid side text. This dumb side text that you guys have. <laughs> so I mean, you, at the, at that time when you guys were kind of negotiating and doing a lot of stuff, you, you'd mentioned you had talked to some other people. Obviously, yeah. things are okay with you guys in the box because you all appeared on BTE. Yeah. How how was that reuniting with them? That was, was, you know, it was great. We stayed in touch with them the whole time, right? We've, I've, I've known those guys since, man, when I moved to Los Angeles in 2006, when they were just getting started, like on the independent scene. I, Rock, Rock, did you know them before then, or was that around the time? When yeah, they I knew them uh, a little bit, before, like a little bit before that, like probably the first couple of years they started wrestling. Yeah, like cocky, really cocky They're young so kids. Cocky. <laughs> but man, I, I clicked with them like right away because I'm a cocky non kid yeah. anymore. Cause I'm an arrogant prick too. Right. So we just clicked together and it was, and I wrestled them all over Los Angeles and we ended up doing stuff with them at PWG. Then Dave Marquez would fly us to Texas and all over the place. And I ended up, you know, forming a great friendship with the boys. And then, Hey, you know, a little it, friendships in, in this business can get a little sticky sometimes. And when you have sure. to make business decisions and I, you know, but no matter what, I know they were hot and I don't blame them for being hot, but, we always stayed in touch, you know? So yeah. it was always kind of like we would send brother texts here and there and like, and then all of a sudden it just kind of snowballed into, and then, and then now everything's great. We're, we're good with everybody. I don't, if you have heat with us, you suck. It's That's fair. True. Now, the last time I did an interview with you, Carl was, I think it was December, 2015. Really? And I asked you a standard question that I ask most people during contract season. Hey, have you had any talks with WWE or anybody else? And you go, yeah, I've had a lot of talks. And admittedly, I was like, ah, he's full of shit. He's staying in New Japan. He got it good there. And then it all unfolds, but we hear down the line, you guys were talking like pretty heavily with TNA at the time. And I don't know that we've ever really heard the story 
about what did or didn't happen there. I mean, yeah. how close were you all and AJ to going to TNA Wrestling at that point? Yeah, we were, we, we were at Dixie Carter's house in Nashville for a meeting with her and John Gaburik, and we were all but – I remember we went outside into her backyard and uh, just to get, like, kind of away from them for a second. We're having this serious brother talk, and we're all kind of going – I wasn't really feeling it. I mean, hmm. I don't know. What do we do here? Because we, we were looking not to leave Japan because we wanted to, but the schedule would become insane. And it just felt like it was time to, uh, to make a move. Like our last week, our last year there, we did like 35 weeks in Japan. And, you know, Carl has 84 kids and, and I have a son too. So it was it was really wearing on our, our family, you know? Yeah, it was just, we just thought it was like, you know, we, we always loved New Japan. We just, we just felt like it was time to, you know, there, we, we'll probably tell the story sometime on Talk and Shop, the podcast at some point, but uh it, it was, we just felt like it was time to, to try and broaden our horizons into America. And TNA was the first ones that reached out. And then at that same time, I remember, I remember walk, walking around the, the arenas with Rocky and like talking to him, like we would just, I'd be telling him about what's going on each day. was a new thing, like a new, something else happened. We got a different offer or this happened. And, you know, and then WWE came along calling and it was like, oh man. And then it was, then money started to become involved. Yeah. It was like, we gotta, we gotta take a backflip into America, babe. And then yep. here we are changing the game again like we did then. Rocky, how are you feeling when they're telling you all this? Because obviously, I remember a couple of years ago, you signed like a multi-year extension with, with New Japan and all that. You seem pretty firmly ingrained there. You got Rock friends. I was thinking, I'm about to get paid. Thanks, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, Rock. Yeah, tell him. Tell him, Rock. <laughs> Like what what yeah. series of emotions I mean, yeah, this, go this, through you at that point? I mean, 2015, so I'm thinking like, uh, well, first I'm just thinking, oh, shit, my friends are leaving. Like, oh, yeah. fuck, you know, like, what am I going to, like, what am I personally going to do, like, you know, to get through these tours and stuff? But um, but outside of that, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for them, you know, especially at that time. I was like, well, you guys got to try it and go for it because if you guys do this, then just the rest, the, like, the rest of it will follow, right? So it's just going to make, all of the wrestlers in new japan pro wrestling even more uh worth more you know so yeah. like outside outside of new japan inside new japan so it was kind of a necessary evolution and step that somebody had to make and uh you know revolutionize we always talk about the revolution you know there's been a couple of revolutions in new japan and and that's definitely one of them you know yeah we we caused that revolution to happen shinsuke <laughs> too right at that time yeah right? you shinsuke guys, too aj and shinsuke that was like you know so obviously this yeah. doesn't reflect on the modern impact regime because there's a completely different regime now than when you all were talking to them. But really? in January, after it became clear you all were heading to WDB, there were some sour grapes from TNA. Like they were putting out there like, congratulations to the new signings of WWE before you all appeared on TV. That was pretty I, weird, right? It was very yeah. weird. <laughs> and they, I like how they and they called AJ, but everybody everybody was uh, well Chad Allegra, <laughs> yeah. Drew Hankinson, and AJ Styles, but they wouldn't call him Allen or so was it? Or they, <laughs> they, it was something weird like that. They they don't have the same privileges as Undertaker <laughs> yeah. has, obviously. There was some weird shit coming out. Like the first thing they released was so sour grapes it made it, it looked weird. It had a weird feel to it. But I mean, I'm still waiting. Yeah. Thank you cards from all the boys who got raises when we did make them move to America. I'm hoping that they'll show up with some Amazon gift cards or something in the coming weeks. We'll say when we left, man, like, hey. Intent, wink, wink. When, 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 we, when, when me, Shinsuke, Gallows, and AJ left to America, I mean, I, I will say a, a lot of guys, I mean, New Japan started locking people up with, like, yeah. full-time contracts that they weren't particularly doing because they didn't, they didn't have to. You know, it, just, it was just the way – it just the game changed then. And um, I'm glad that it did. And, but it, and none of it was because we were mad at New Japan. And New Japan's all, and they, we, we left properly. We, we re kept the relationships properly. And uh, I mean, we're, we're excited to head back when the time's right. Rocky, how did you see things change when there was that exodus of Gallows, Anderson, Nakamura? Like, did you notice like a real shift in a lot? Of, like, were they pushing you, other people? Like, hey, we got to get you signed up. We got to make sure. What? Right, right. Well, I think that like, yeah, I mean, definitely all of all of us are pretty, you know, re-signed and locked in for for multi years after that mm -hmm. um, pretty quickly. Uh, definitely that was contract season. So it's like January ish. So um, 
I remember like Tom I resigned, I resigned, a bunch of like pretty much everybody resigned. And then um, but I, I know like outside of it, everybody was saying, Oh, you know, New Japan, oh, they're gonna be so screwed, they're gonna be so screwed, like AJ's leaving, Al uh, Gallows and Anderson, Shinsuke, and then that's like the one thing that I knew we weren't going to be screwed in the fact like, yeah, it's a big deal that all these guys are leaving, but like, there's always, you know, so many bullets in the chamber ready to go. So, you know, there was the rise of Naito and LIJ, uh, the Bullet Club, uh, you know, Kenny, the Bucks and, you know, that generation of the Bullet Club, that was the rise of that, you know, you know, so it's like New Japan always seems to do well, even though like every couple of years, this is going to happen. It's just a natural progression of professional wrestling, uh, you know, and, you know, but I think one thing that New Japan is good at is they always got the next generation kind of ready to go when something like this does happen. And there's a major shift. Yeah. And crazy. They, it's crazy. We don't let Rocky talk often and he really has good things to say. Wow. He does. Yeah. <laughs> Smart and articulate. Wow. Yeah, wow no, Rock, what did you? Just here for the right. paycheck. Right. What is Gallows, Gallows, cut him off real quick. Jesus, this dude, he, he was making too much sense. Rock, shut the fuck up. Anyway, here he was. <laughs> and, and New Japan, especially with Bullet Club, you see that. Because when Devitt left, a lot of people are like, okay, who will fill his spot? Well, there's AJ Styles, a guy who had already been at the top for 15 years at that point. Well, who, who's going to be ready when he leaves? Well, it's Kenny Omega. Yeah, well, what right. about him? And then Switchblade, yeah. for a company that doesn't hesitate to give people opportunities while still keeping their established people on, on a high level. I mean, it doesn't seem to be that much of an issue. Now I'm, I'm interested with, with talking shop mania. I mean, this is completely the brainchild of you guys, which is equal parts, fascinating and horrifying. More gallows than anybody. Let's say the brainchild of gallows, and he kind and he, he, he. I wouldn't say bully because I don't want to use that word anymore. But he's six foot six, seven, right? And he quote unquote bullied us into helping him do this. I Without using the word bully. I said we're in the middle of a pandemic. People need to laugh. I'm running a pay per view in my backyard, and you guys are going to participate. Is kind of how I said it. <laughs> That's not true. That's not <laughs> true. <laughs> Could have opted out of participating. But now look how much fun you're having. Here we are on Fightful. We're talking yeah. shots. And I, mean, I know you guys, one thing. It's, you guys it, have it, impact helping you guys promote this stuff too. Like I directly, I, I was talking to Ross earlier. Like the, uh, we're good little negotiators. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't take that way away from us. We're pretty good at negotiating. And like, and we, and we got an awesome deal from impact. Like they, I, I honestly want to stay there for 25 years now. So guys, I hope it, you guys are ready. It's funny too, like, because, uh, you know, when somebody tells you something like we're going to promote this parody, this shit you guys came up with and, and their EVPs on the property while we're doing it, watch this going, and what in the hell have we signed these guys up for? But then to stay true to their word, um, you know, to have that lower third graphic, to have the commentary uh, putting over the, the Talking Shop of Mania show coming up Saturday, August 1st at 9 p.m., uh, it's awesome. And, and earlier, it's such a team feeling. Like earlier today, he sent me a 30-second spot that we're going to drop into the show uh, that will air tomorrow night. So it couldn't have been a better decision for us because they're on board to support our podcast, Talking Shop, available where you listen to podcasts. Uh, and they're supporting our pay-per-view. We got some other projects, a beer coming out that's a little yeah. delayed and all that. They have come on board full scale to just go, okay, let's co-brand together. Let's build our brands together. And that's what we were really looking for. So it's it's been a blessing, man. I think they were pretty happy that that uh, we were that were that were legitimate proven draws. Like we've been telling people for years, but nobody ever believes us. And then we li literally drew a fucking shitload of people to slam anniversary. And uh, okay. I think they were happy about that. They, they and, sent us uh, a press release touting that the announcement of you all coming to Impact was like their most engaged social media post of all time. Ever. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's <laughs> pretty wild. That beat out D-Ray 3000 doing whatever it is that he used to do. And Shark oh Boy. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, we're moving, we're moving away from that stuff. Come on now. <laughs> so we've seen in the <laughs> teaser video some of the wild stuff that we're going to see. What didn't make the cut? Do you see Rocky's background? Like that is the arena that Gallows yeah. pitched us. That pitched us the day we got fired. I might add. I'm just. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how my kids are going to go to college and all this because that, <laughs> that that was all set. My shit was set. I was. Set. I don't <laughs> tell you. Don't worry. Yep. We'll be fine. Care of you. And now here we are putting on the worst pay per view in the history of all time. Everyone's going to hate it. I can't wait. 
I was sitting there doing commentary with, for some reason, Rocky wasn't doing commentary with me because I, I think he was, well, somebody, yeah, he was helping Chico do something, right? That's Rocky's other guy. But I'm sitting yeah. there doing commentary with Chavo Guerrero, right? And I'm just, and we're, and I'm thinking like, Chavo's got to be like thinking we're the most insane guys in the world. And then Chavo starts talking about how he's going to kill this other character on the, on the, that's in the ring. And I'm thinking, you yeah. can't talk about killing somebody, but of course you can. It's, it's our pay per view. We can see whatever we it's want. A, and it's not real. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. not real. He came from Lucha Underground. They kill people all the time there. It's, it's a fucking work, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like WWE shit. The hell about shit's not, it didn't make sense. It doesn't fucking matter. It's a work, guys. <laughs> Fuck. Chavo, to Chavo's credit, though, he wanted to be a part of it because he was right on point. He goes, You guys are like the fun loving brand now, and I want to be in on this good brother shit. It's exactly what he said. And I go, Well, we have an idea that you might or might not want to be involved in. And then he flew here and he loved it. And he put together this awesome nineties tribute segment that you'll see during the pay-per-view. Uh, he was here both days of shooting and had a good time. You got to remember, there's a lot of crazy shit going on in the world right now. Yeah. And we wanted everybody to have a laugh. Don't take this too seriously. It's yeah. 14. It's an hour and a half. And it's a parody of what we all love. Professional wrestling. If you've never been locked inside of a boner yard before, like <laughs> I have, like an one, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You have to tune in to see. My, my, my wife goes, dude, did you, did you wish uh, Finn Balor a happy birthday yesterday? I go, no. And she goes, you named your second kid or your third, your third year. I can't remember which kid, your third kid's middle <laughs> name after, after him. And I go, Oh yeah. I mean, she goes, well, you don't have to send my happy birthday message. Oh yeah. Well, let me, sorry. So I, I look, looked at his, to my messages and I realized that a week ago he goes all set and ready, babe. And showed that he pre-ordered talk of Chopper mania. And I forgot. To <laughs> oh yeah. He sent it to me too. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, we, we had some of the biggest names in the business by Slammiversary in Texas about yeah. that too. And I don't want to say their names, but I mean, top, top, top of the line brothers, like legends, legitimate legends that bought Slammiversary who don't watch wrestling. Chopper mania. Are they buying Talking Chopper Mania, though? And they're going to buy they Talking Chopper Mania. Okay, I, nice. I can promise you they're going to buy <laughs> Talking Chopper Mania. The caliber of guys we're talking about, they can afford the $14.99. Yeah, 100, 100%. Yeah. So, Probably so. a thousand times over. So, yeah. Rocky, as, <laughs> yeah. we, as we wrap up, what, were your, what was your reaction when you were pitched this idea? Because you obviously are familiar with these two guys. You spent a lot of time with them. Was there anything that you heard along the way that you're like, so we're doing that? Yeah, no, like the especially the original pitch that Gallows had, like I was just thinking, oh fuck, I can't be involved in this. <laughs> That's all I kept thinking, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. but but then uh, you got to take yourself out of it and be like, okay, this is a parody of professional yeah. wrestling. This is not the real deal. Let's take ourselves out of it. Let's just have fun with it. And like, it, it's it's such a wild pay per view, and it's, I had so much fun with these guys. Just you know, it was a headache and it was crazy, but just getting everything done and then watching the I Gala's house, you know, because we had to edit it so quickly, watching like the first edit of like the Boner Yard match, I, I just I fell in love with it. And I was just like, dude, I love what we're doing. This is fucking amazing. You guys are so insane, but you guys are fucking crazy madman geniuses. And uh, I, I'm just so excited for everybody to see this pay-per-view. Just listen to our commentary on the rest of the show too. Like the rest of the show is fun, but like when you just the three of us just fuck just talking together and like just we're laugh. laughing at what's happening or what's yeah. not happening or like making fun of like did that really just happen, guys? Oh my god, who booked that? That's Gallows. That's a Gallows guy. <laughs> Gallows <laughs> book. It, like, it would be like if the three of us went to like a lower level upstart independent show, but we were disguised and we just got to sit there beers and just kind of heckle along with it that's our commentary which made it so much fun to actually do that that we kind of got lost in it and went, all right we gotta we gotta slow down we can't just party right now like we have actual work. <laughs> but then we're day. realizing that nobody cares about the matches they want to hear us they bought it for us yes so <laughs> right let's talk more it's personality yeah. driven and that, that's one of the reasons people were so frustrated about the way you guys were used in wdb sometimes so now people are getting to see that uh, as we, we finish up, let the people know where they can learn more about uh, Talk and Chopper Mania. Obviously, Fight TV, pay-per-view providers everywhere, August uh, 1st, 9 p.m. I'm very excited about it. Uh, Gallows, you want to kind of let people know? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say first out of the gate, check our social medias. Um, and tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Access TV or available internationally on Twitch. Uh, tune into Impact Wrestling. We have a great show. There's a great new teaser for the uh, 
the pay-per-view that I'm not allowed to release on social yet, but I'm dying to. I think it'll give you guys a great glimpse into exactly what's going on. Rock, do you want to hit like all the socials on that too? Uh, yeah, Twitter, Talking Shop, T-A-L-K-N-S-H-O-P. Uh, on Instagram, we're Talking Shop Podcast. And uh, what else do we got, guys? Hey, we're going to have a huge uh, boost. Our Patreon, patreon.com backslash T A L K N shop. We're going to have a huge boozing with the boys at where we just get together and we get hammered. Or, <laughs> you, or, or they can smoke CBD oil or like whatever. Because <laughs> sometimes they're smoking stuff. This one guy took a big hit of something on boozing with the boys and then his fire alarm went off. He almost set his alarm on his apartment on yeah. fire live on Zoom. We haven't seen him. Well, yeah, that's going to be at 8 p.m. on Saturday to pre to pre party before because you yeah. got to have a little something. It's going like on a tailgate. You watch this shit. It's a virtual tailgate to yeah. talk and shop. So, right there. So yeah. Patreon backslash talk and shop. Basically, you can come on there and get drunk with us as we prep for this. If yeah. you're in the south or you want to travel, see it live. I'll be at Southern Brewing Co. hosting a boozing with the boys and a watch along. Uh, oh, nice. It'll be outside on a big screen. It's like a drive-in talking shop mania party, Athens, Georgia, Saturday night, Southern Brewing Co. Watch it with me. That way you can either laugh with me or laugh at me when it's over and I'm either smiling or crying. <laughs> Sean, when you buy these, dude, is, is this a write-off for you? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh well then, brother, you have you pre-bought it yet? Yes, of course I have. Oh, Don't be ridiculous. God, this is incredible. Thanks. You're going to... No, well, you have a, next year you have I'm some buying, IPAs. I'm buying a house next year. I got to show as much income as possible. So I'm going to oh, wait perfect. until after I get the house, <laughs> then perfect. deduct it. That's, that's nice. you know. And I, I like that. That's good. When I got fired, I wondered how the fuck I was going to be able to afford my big ass house. And then, oh, uh, take Gallows out to dinner. So talking shop mania is what is going to happen. Yeah, look <laughs> at him and say wrestling, and it's automatically deductible. Like that. Yeah. I that's it. told you everything would be fine, and it is. <laughs> My wife and I went on a honeymoon. We went to Orlando. I looked square at the Performance Center, and I said, you know what? Deductible. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I Guys, am going to run the house because I shot a pay-per-view here. There's got to be a way to do this. Oh, Deductible. That- that is, a, that is an op- Your yard <laughs> is your home office. Right. Take the square footage. Deductible. Gallows <laughs> bought go. a hearse. A hearse is sitting I in his know. front driveway. For sure. Is. I, just, I, just had to, I am I had so excited for the deposition that I'm going to be a part of in a few years. <laughs> yeah. As a result of this tax That's, fraud that we have going true. on. Uh, Talking Shop of Mania, August 1st. Hopefully, I get to speak to you guys again sometime soon. Thank you all so much. Thanks, for Thanks brother. Thank you, bro. Until next time, guys, we're out.